he knew his camera and he knew it like it was part of an extension of himself. Together, Jim Marshall and his Leica clicked. <laughs> Capturing the most intimate moments as if he was letting us in on a secret. He got personal with the music greats, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, The Grateful Dead, and the Beatles' last performance at Candlestick Park. This is coming onto the stage at Candlestick, coming out of second base, and I was running backwards. Jim died in 2010. He left his photo archive to his assistant, Amelia Davis. When we were cleaning out his apartment, I came across a notebook that Jim had done. That notebook was a mock-up of a project Jim started in 1976. It was called The Hate, a collection of never-before-seen photos Jim took in the late 60s. In some ways I feel like an archaeologist and I'm on a dig and I'm finding all these treasures. Jim tried to get the book published in the 70s but no one would bite, so Amelia decided to finish a project no one knew he started, about a love of a place, an era, and a state of mind. It shows everything that was going on, not just the music, but the anti-war protests, the interracial marriages, the drug scene. The hate was ground zero for this global explosion of higher consciousness, fueled by LSD, rock music, and new political and social thinking. Emilio called on author, journalist, and Jim's friend, Joe Selvin, to put words to Jim's art. Obnoxious, abrasive, contentious, profane. But if uh, Jim Marshall was your friend, you had a friend for life. Joel wrote the history behind hundreds of Jim's photos. It's a moment in time that was over pretty much before anybody knew what was happening. These pieces of history will never happen again. And that's Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones. But he also had the ability to really blend in. So he never stood out. And so people forgot he was there. So he could get those very intimate moments. And there's a moment in time frozen and framed. He may have been somewhere photographing a musician, but he also was looking around and seeing what else was going on around at the time. And a lot of photographers didn't do that. They didn't have that curiosity. A curiosity that captured Bay Area history, and it all came from a notebook buried in photographs. We finished what Jim started, and I think, I think he'd be proud of it. In San Francisco, Kate Kogiran, KPIX5.